Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, as always, and delighted and excited that you've been able to tune in with us yet again for another show. Now, before we do get started, don't forget to like this video and please do subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when the next available episode of the Thai Expat Daily Show is uploaded on the platform. Now, if you like listening to us on the podcast player, like many of you do, there's a link down down below in the description which will take you to a website where all the available podcast players can be found and finally if you like the show if you want to support the show you can do so by looking down in the description yet again for a link for buymeacoffee.com so now that's all done and dusted let's jump into the top stories trending here in thailand and the first one we're going to talk about is uh taxon shinawatra and his impending return apparently this tuesday nine o'clock don muang airport he will be arriving air here in thailand we'll see if it really happens though so observers question taxon's return Fugitive former Prime Minister Taksin Shinawatra's latest announcement on his return to Thailand is seen as a reflection of his confidence in Pua Thai's formation of a new government, but some political observers remain sceptical about his trip. Taksin's return from self-imposed exile is scheduled for Tuesday, the same day Parliament will meet to select the country's 30th Prime Minister. Pua Thai, which is expected to nominate Sareta Tavasin for the post, has brought the United Thai Nation, UTN, party into its coalition, with the Palang Pacharat party pledging to support its candidate despite not forming the coalition formally. According to Peitung Tarn, Shinawatra, Taksin's youngest daughter, her father will return at Don Muang Airport at 9am on his private jet. Taksin and his sister Yingluk reportedly left Dubai for Singapore yesterday and he would depart for Don Muang Airport on Tuesday. Journalists have been told to register and wait at the airport's building for. Now, Pantong Te, his son, and Ban Pop Dan Ma Pong, brother of his ex-wife, are scheduled to meet him in Singapore and travel with him to Thailand. Taksim previously announced that he would return to Thailand on August 10th, but later postponed the trip due to a medical checkup appointment, prompting some political analysts to take Taksim's latest return announcement with a grain of salt. Now, Yutaporn Isara Chai, a political science lecturer at Sukhothai University, said whether tax and returns or not, his announcement works as a strategy to boost confidence among Pua Thai members and supporters. Describing Taksin as Pua Thai's spiritual leader, Mr. Yutaporn said, while his return may influence the outcome of the vote, it is unlikely to change it because the vote will be finished by then. But I'm not sure if Taksin's magic still works now that the political situation has changed, he said. Puatai couldn't dominate the elections, so his return may not make much of a difference. Jatapun Prampam, the former chairman of the Red Shirt United Front for Democracy, against dictatorship, said Taksin has lost credibility, adding Taksin's words are not to be believed until the ex-Prime Minister steps foot on Thai soil. Mr Jatapun said Taksin can return any day he wants, but the fact that he picked August 22nd, which coincides with the Prime Ministerial vote, suggests the two developments are related. There could be a change of tactic, he said. Taxon has resu- refused to enter the justice system for 15 years and now has a change of heart. Wait until you see him, he added. He has lied about it many times before and there's nothing for him to lose anymore. He said he believes Mrs. Sareta Tavasin would not become the next prime minister. Tanapur and Sarah Kool, director of the Institute of Politics and Political Analysis, said Taxon will return on Tuesday because he feels confident about Pua Thai's chances of forming the next government. Taxon's return is rather good than bad for Pua Thai's coalition because partners want to directly talk to the showrunner, he said. They can still talk to him although he is overseas, but it is more convenient if he's here. And uh, basically it goes on to talk about some other scenarios. But an interesting thing that I read recently, and it was uh, on Twitter, but the Corrections Department Director General told Machian, which is a Thai news publication here in Thailand, that Acting Justice Minister Vasana Kring Tam has instructed the department to ensure the security of former Prime Minister Taksin Shinawatra upon his arrival in Thailand. They were also directed to facilitate his meeting with representatives from international organisations and his supporters, as well as provide him with specific accommodation due to his age of over 70 years and his poor health. Ariyut stated that Taksin will undergo quarantine upon his arrival at the prison, but he will be permitted to receive visitors in a designated facility. There is also a possibility that Taksin might be transferred to, for detention to the Department of Corrections Hospital, contingent upon his medical condition. 
are yet denied the existence of a special room designated for taxing at the hospital, though additional security measures will be implemented. So apparently this Tuesday, 9am, this guy's coming back to Thailand. By the way, the same day that we will have the prime ministerial vote in Parliament. What a surprise. It's all got to be about him. Now, Sareta Tavisin, this could be a fine moment for him, become the 30th prime minister of the country. But no, 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 Taksin needs to be about him. He needs all the light shining on him because he wants to take all the fanfare because this is what this guy is all about. If people are wondering about him, just look him up on Wikipedia and have a good read about him. He's no angel. He's been very corrupt in the past and he's got a 10-year prison sentence waiting for him. And, by the way, outstanding cases that are on hold until he returns to the country so he could be in court for a very long time now there's a talk that he might get a royal pardon and he will only spend 24 hours in prison he can apply for a royal pardon and then he could be forgiven and be out the next day that's something that may happen but if he applies for a royal pardon and it is denied then he can't apply again for two more years It'll be interesting to see what deals have been cut for this guy it does make a bit of a mockery of the justice system some of the things that he's been convicted of are legitimate offences here in Thailand and he should be doing his time. Of course, he believes he's above the law. But then again, how much support will he really have with the red shirts now, Pua Thai party, going into government with the coup leaders and the coup makers? This is all very interesting. We'll find out really if he's going to keep his word on Tuesday. I'm still 50-50 on it, you know, unless there is a firm deal in place. If he returns, we can be guaranteed that there is a firm deal in place so he doesn't do any prison time. I do believe that's unfair to people who spent many years in prison and who've had to suffer in prison while this guy gets a free pass. And he's deliberately, deliberately made sure he never came back to Thailand and never came back to face the cases against him. I mean... One of the cases and one of the things I was reading interesting enough about him is was he was in Thailand and he was undergoing and he was going through this system. And in fact, one of the things that he did was he wasn't allowed to leave the country. And if he did, he needed to get permission. And just typical of him and typical of his mindset that he's above the law was he decided to fly off to China without any permission from the courts and head off to the opening ceremonies of the Olympic Games whenever it was. And that's when he never came back. Because if he'd come back, he knew he would have been arrested and put in jail for violation of his bail conditions. And this is the kind of person he is. He does what he wants because he has money and he thinks he can get away with it. And again, this will be showing that the rich here in Thailand and the powerful are treated differently than the common man. And I believe that's just completely unfair. And there is a two-tier system here. There's a tier for the rich and powerful and there's a tier for everybody else. And everybody else must follow the rules. They must go to prison if they break the law and the, and the court says so. But this guy and other guys like him and his ilk, they get away with it. But I'd love to know what you think about it all down below in the comment section. Now, interesting poll as well that's come out about the Puatai's government of reconciliation. Poll respondents, they disagree with this. Most respondents to a NIDA poll disagreed with the Puatai's party partnering with two junta-linked parties, Palang Pracharat and the United Thai Nation, to form a government of reconciliation, and most would prefer Petong Tarn Shinawatra as Thailand's next Prime Minister. The National Institute of Development, that's the NIDA, conducted an opinion poll of 1,310 people aged 18 and over of various occupations and educational backgrounds across the country. Asked about the government of reconciliation to end the decades-old political colour polarisation, the poll said 47% of the respondents strongly disagree with such a government. 17% disagree, while 19% said they strongly support such a government, and 15% said they agree. Asked who is most appropriate to be Thailand's next Prime Minister, 38% of the respondents favour Pei Tung Tarn, while 36 want Sarata Tavasin, and 8% support Chai Kasim Nithasiri, also of the Pua Thai Party. The survey also shows that nearly 40% have never voted for the Pua Thai Party or its two disbanded predecessors, Thai Rak Thai and Palang Pracharan. 33% said they voted for Pua Thai and its predecessors. 26% said they did not vote for the party in the May 14th election, although they had voted for the party in the past. So that's just a little flavour of where Thai people are thinking at the moment in terms of this. To me, it's not anything earth shattering. I don't think a lot of people are too thrilled what they're doing because Pua Thai have broken the promise that they made during the um, before the election, during their campaigning, that they would never enter into power with Palang Pracharat or with uh, the party of Priyat Chanacha. And in fact, they've done 
and broken their word on it. So I think it will come back to haunt them in the past. Basically, they can't be trusted, and that's what the next election will be all about. Now, moving a long, interesting story, a little shocking as well. The biggest sex for sale website has been shut down by police in an early morning raid targeting foreigners. A recent operation led by a specialised task force mandated by Prime Minister Priya Chanacha aimed at countering online criminal activity involving foreigners in Thailand. The operation targeted activities tarnishing the country's image causing public inconvenience. Now in Hua Hin, an American Thai couple was apprehended this week for allegedly operating Thailand's major prostitution website catering to foreign tourists. The joint task force, consisting of Bangkok Police, Immigration Bureau, and Information Technology Crime Suppression Centre, seized assets worth 40 million baht, including a villa and 9 million baht in bank deposits. The website, known as AbsoluteAngelsBangkok.com, dominated Google rankings with nearly 430,000 monthly visits. The operation began on August 13th, resulting in the arrest of the administrator, a Thai woman named Miss Kanya. Her American husband, tentatively identified as Mr. Brad was also detained. Based on Pattaya Provincial Court Warrant 4172566, the couple faces charges related to prostitution, aiding in decent activities, and facilitating prostitution. Investigating officers found the website offers services of around 80 prostitutes, including women and ladyboys, often in pairs or groups. During the arrest, police confiscated four computers, account books, and financial records, revealing assets totaling 40 million baht. These assets, including a villa worth around 50 million baht, a Mercedes Benz C200 Coupe, a Honda CRV, and 9 million baht in bank accounts. The website is yet to be restricted by the Digital Economy and Society Ministry, so it's still up and going. The operation also brought to light potential money laundering and international connections. Police suspect involvement in transnational crime and human trafficking. The website used various communication tools like Apple iPhones, WhatsApp and international credit cards for payment services. The crackdown aligns with Thailand's efforts to combat negative foreign-run businesses and address transnational crime. Any activity linked to prostitution will be subject to police action, including advertising and solicitation. Police tracked Mrs. Kanya's location through her iPhone to coordinate her arrest upon arrival at Suanapum Airport. So, I mean, it's not that shocking, really. I mean, I think we all know these kind of websites exist here in Thailand. It's just a matter of them catching the people running them, I guess. Maybe a little smarter would not be living in Thailand and running such a website and doing it abroad, uh, maybe through a comp- country that, you know, has no extradition with Thailand and really don't care about it. They don't seem that they were that smart. I think they were happy and very confident with the amount of money that they'd be making but not smart enough to know that you don't do it in thailand's backyard because this is the kind of stuff they will go after even though as we all know prostitution here in thailand i mean it's it's not a secret that it exists especially when you go to places like phuket or Pattaya and certain parts of bangkok so i mean the police know it does exist but i think this and the problem with this it's so in your face and it's been advertised on the internet being one of the top google searches with, as they say, nearly 430,000 visitors each month. So obviously somebody was making a lot of money and maybe not giving it uh, the piece of the pie to the people that need it to be as well. That could be something as well. So we'll move along anyway. Uh, tourist data shows numbers on track to reach the annual target. That's according to Ministry. The number of foreign tourists visiting Thailand during the second week of August totaled 577,000. The Tourism Ministry announced saying the numbers aligned with the target set for this year. About 82,000 foreign tourists stepped foot on Thai soil from August 7th to 13th, with the highest number arriving from China, Malaysia, South Korea, India and Japan. Notably, the number of Japanese tourists surged 85% compared to the preceding weeks, marking the third consecutive week of growth. The surge in visitors from Japan has been attributed to the Oban Festival holiday, which is celebrated in mid-August. Thailand also saw a 23% increase in Indian tourists, a second consecutive weekly rise, as India prepared to celebrate its Independence Day on August 15th. Since the beginning of 2023, Thailand has attracted 16.5 million foreign tourists. Malaysia was the top source of foreign visitors with 2.5 million, followed by China to just over 2 million, South Korea just under a million, and India just also under a million. Russians came in with 884,000, by the way. The ministry said the number of international tourist arrivals is on track to reach its annual target. The upcoming week is expected to see an influx of foreign tourists exploring Thailand with an estimated 570,000 visitors from East and Southeast Asia expected. 
Many nations are actively streamlining travel arrangements to attract Chinese tourists, especially Chinese tour groups, officials said. While Thailand's cross-border tourism sector remains relatively unaffected by global economic slowdowns and ongoing conflicts, it is imperative for the Thai tourism industry to expedite its adaptation strategy to create unique attractions and clearly position itself as a sought-after destination tour operators say. Countries like Singapore, Japan and South Korea have already made substantial efforts in bolstering their tourism profiles to capture the attention of potential travellers, they explained. So good news for Thailand, good news for the Thai people. Lots of foreigners coming to the country, spend their money and have a good time. And as I always say, regardless of the news and opinions that we share from time to time about the government and things like that, Thailand as a destination, a holiday destination, is a wonderful place. And I would always encourage people to come to Thailand and holiday here because I think there is just some fantastic places and things to do and see. And you know, there's no better country in the world to come see. If you're coming for a two-week holiday, it's absolutely fantastic. You can go to the likes of Phuket, Bangkok, Pattaya, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, you know, all these kind of areas. And I know they're kind of stereotypical Thai in the places you'll say you'll go visit, but they are very, very beautiful. If you've never been here before, you will be blown out of the water by the scenery, the landscape and the people here in Thailand. Now, finally, a little bit of Phuket news. No weed violations on Bangla, say police. Patong police confirmed there was no violations committed following a random inspection to deter any infringements of marijuana laws on Bangla Road last night. The team from Patong Police Station was led by the Deputy Superintendent and headed down to the popular nighttime destination at around 10.30pm. There were 20 officers in total as part of the inspection, including officers from the Special Patrol Network, the Investigative Squad, as well as a motorbike patrol officers. Several establishments on Bangla Road were inspected to check for correct licenses to permit the sale of controlled herbs and to ensure no sales were being made to people under the age of 20, minors or pregnant women. Further checks were made to ensure nobody was smoking marijuana in public spaces, officers confirmed. Now, police did not say or give any indication as to how many establishments were checked or the time frame involved in the process, although they did confirm that no violations have been detected. The inspection campaign came after the Phuket Cannabis Association issued an official declaration of intent regarding the sale of marijuana across the island last month, a move they say will improve safety and quality standards for consumers. It also follows a recent visit by a member of parliament of the Australian state of Victoria who voiced his concerns over a lack of awareness regarding the laws regulating the use of cannabis and how the availability of marijuana in Phuket may land some tourists, especially Australians, in trouble. So yeah, marijuana, they're all legal above board in Phuket and nothing to see there, apparently. Anyway, folks, that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you in the next couple of days. Have a great day, stay safe and take care. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show and we will see you next time.